People look for the shortcut, the hack. And if you came here looking for that, you won't find it. There is no easy way. There is only hard work, late nights, early mornings, practice, repetition, sweat, blood, toil, frustration, and discipline. There is only one way, the way of discipline. This book is by a retired Navy SEAL Lieutenant Commander named John Gretton Willink better known as Jocko. Every single day, Jocko gets up at 4.34 a.m. And every single day, Jocko posts a picture of his watch at 4.34 a.m. He has one goal, to get after it. So I decided to give waking up that early a shot for a full month and see whether or not it would change my life. I have a slight advantage because I have to be at work at 6 a.m. so I have motivation to get up. But that also means going to the gym before work would require getting up at 4.05 a.m. The first week, I got off to a strong start. It was awesome. For the most part, I felt like I was unstoppable. I'm not super proud of this, but I did get into the habit of taking a sip of Mountain Dew or an energy drink around 5.30 a.m. just so I wasn't showing up to work completely zonked. There were a couple afternoons where I was really dragging and fighting off a nap and a couple times the nap won. It's 7 p.m. It is dark outside and it feels like the middle of the night to me right now. But as the experiment went on I became less and less dependent on both the naps and the caffeine. For the mornings I tried to eliminate as much friction as possible between waking up and getting out the door. That meant packing my gym bag the night before, setting out my shoes so they were ready to go, even wearing clean gym clothes to sleep. I wanted to give myself as few opportunities as possible to give up and climb back into bed. Just as I was getting into a good rhythm, I hit a little snag. Okay, so a little plot twist. My wife is actually out of town for the week, and when I've been doing these early mornings, I go straight to work, so she gets up and walks our dog before she goes to work. So now that she's gone, I'm gonna have to add a walk into my morning routine, which means I think I'm gonna have to set my alarm tomorrow morning for 3.30 instead of four. We're officially moving from level hard to level expert. The fact that the number starts in the three o'clock hour just makes it feel like it's not the morning, it's just straight up the middle of the night. So we'll see how this goes. All right, in bed by 9.30. I'm gonna see if I can fall asleep pretty quickly and get close to six hours. An old mentor of mine calls this sleeping in on the front end. All right, good night. If you get out of bed at 4.55, a vast majority of the world is still sleeping. You aren't. You are up getting after it. The world is yours when you're up before the enemy. There is no traffic, the gym is empty, there's no one to distract you or call you or send you some text about something you don't care about. It's just you. So go to bed early and wake up early. Coincidentally, one of those 3.30 a.m. days was also the day I filmed the fast food gauntlet. So when you watch that video, just know that even though it's only like 6.30 p.m., I had already been up for almost 18 hours at that point. The second week was Thanksgiving, so all discipline kind of went out the window. I was still waking up fairly early, but definitely not going to the gym before 5 a.m. But after Thanksgiving, I was back at it. People constantly ask me for the secret of getting up early. I tell them it is simple. Set your alarm clock and get out of bed when it goes off. To be specific here, I use what I call the triple alarm system. Let me tell you about it. First of all, I use a sunrise alarm clock. It starts getting lighter about 10 minutes before I need to get up. It has sound, but I don't use it. Next, my watch goes off at the time I want to get up. It makes noise and it also vibrates. That was a key feature I wanted in a watch, something that could physically startle me from my sleep. And finally, I set an alarm a minute later on my old iPhone and then a few more as a last line of defense. So if any one of those alarms fail, I have backups. No excuse. Uses. Last thing I'd recommend when your first alarm goes off, put your feet on the floor. It's a lot harder to talk yourself into getting up when you're lying down because you'll fall back asleep before you even have the chance to win that argument. But when your feet are on the floor, you're already halfway there and it's actually possible to win that argument. So put your feet on the floor. I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. For the last week, I knew I wanted to finish strong, so I made a resolution to go five days straight without skipping a single day. Discipline starts with waking up early, but that's just the beginning. It's working out every day, eating the right foods to fuel your system correctly, disciplining your emotions. It's about treating people the way you want to be treated. It's about doing the tasks you don't want to do, but you know will help you. Discipline means taking the hard road, the uphill road, to do what is right for you and for others. Somehow I was able to make it happen, even though one of those five days fell on a Sunday when I very well could have slept in. It gave me time to sit and read in the morning, which is something I haven't felt like I've had time for in a while. Having the discipline to get up in the morning meant that I could get stuff done early, and it gave me the freedom to totally relax in the afternoon. I did find that discipline had a trickle down effect. When I got up early and I worked out, I was more motivated to eat better to fuel my body for the next day. I was motivated to unpack my gym bag, to put my clothes away, to do a load of laundry when I got home. 
It's crazy how one tiny decision can affect the rest of your day. My friend Katie talks about health as being something that's sustainable, something that you can see yourself doing for the rest of your life. And what happened to me this month is what's called yo-yoing, where I was really far into one extreme and then I'd fall back and barely do it at all. And so my goal going forward is to find somewhere in between what's something that I can do for the long haul. So living the Navy SEAL lifestyle might not be for everyone, but as we get close to the end of the year, I do think that Jocko has something good to say about New Year's resolutions. Resolutions are for the most part little feel-good statements that people use to justify a delay in execution. Don't make a New Year's resolution for tomorrow. Don't execute then. Execute now. A New Year's resolution is a year. That's a big long chunk of time. I don't care who you are. It's too long. Set those short-term goals that are closer than a year away. Do all those things, but don't do them on New Year's Day. Do them now. So just something to think about. If you have a positive change you want to make in your life, why wait until January 1st when you can get a two-week head start by starting now? And finally, as someone that likes to talk a big game but rarely puts my money where my mouth is, I want to leave you with this quote that fires me up. Don't just plan. Don't just mark your calendar. Don't just get motivated. Don't just talk. Don't just think. Don't just dream. No, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you actually do so do. All right, well, whether or not that was motivating to you or whether you get up early or sleep in late, I just want you to remember that even when it doesn't feel like it, it's going to be okay. I'll see you soon.